Hi everyone, welcome to our first lesson on finding a formula for the area of a parallelogram. Uh, this is kind of part one of two lessons, and the next lesson we'll be looking at finding the area of a trapezium. And in both cases, we also want to look at how we derive those formulas for those areas, okay? But before we begin, um, let's just have you do a nice little warm up, okay? So if you can press pause, please, and do the questions here, then that would be great. And then press play when you're done, and we'll go through the solutions, okay? So press pause now. Okay, guys, well done. Let's just get it set up so that we can go through the solutions together. Okay, lovely. Okay, nice and focused. Right, so in our first question, okay, it says, which of these shapes are parallelograms? And which of them are trapezia? Well, what we have to remember with a parallelogram is that there are two opposite sides, um, or two pairs of opposite sides, and in both cases, they are parallel to each other. So for example, okay, that would be a parallelogram if those two were parallel to each other and these two were parallel to each other, okay? So they are opposite sides and they are pairs of parallel opposite sides. So that's what makes a parallelogram. The difference between that and a trapezium is that in a trapezium, one of those sets of opposite sides is parallel, but the other ones aren't. So that would be an example of a trapezium because yes, this pair of opposite sides is parallel, but this pair isn't. Okay, so when we look at the question for question one, um, if we look at which ones are the parallelograms, then it's fairly clear to see that A has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, so does B. I know it's a rectangle, but a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. Okay, C, no. D, yes. E, no. And F is a diamond. Okay, so it's neither. And when we're looking at the trapezia, okay, <clears throat> then we have C and we have E. All right, so hopefully you guys got that. Well done to those of you who did. Okay, and question two says work out the area of each shape. Okay, so if we look at the first shape, so that's our rectangle. Remember that the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. And in this case, we have five times three, which is equal to 15 centimeters squared. Okay, and if we remember for a triangle from last lesson, the area of a triangle is base times height divided by two. Okay, so this one is going to be 20 times 12 divided by two. Okay, um, now 20 times 12, two times 12 is 24. So that's 240 divided by two, which is 120 millimeters squared. Okay, so that finishes off question two. And finally, question three is asking us to work out the values of these expressions when x is five and y is nine. Okay, so this is asking us to substitute. So that's what it's challenging us on, substitution. So let's take a look. So for part A, we have x, y, and they told us that x was 5 and that y was 9. So x, y means multiplication. So that's going to be 5 times 9, which is 45. Okay, let's take a look at part B. Part B says x plus y. Well, that's going to be 5 plus 9, which is 14. Okay, 
for part C, we had four brackets x plus y. Remember in our order of operations, we're going to do what's inside the bracket first. So that's four brackets 5 plus 9, which is four brackets 14 which is going to be 4 times 14. That's what that means. Now, 4 times 10 is 40, and 4 times 4 is 16. So when we add those together, we get 56. And for part D, we have a half times x plus y. Might be easier to think of this as a fraction. So before we begin, we can write this as x plus y over 2, OK? Um, we know that that's 5 plus 9 over 2, which is 14 over 2, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. And last part, part E. <clears throat> we have 1 half of x plus y, and then an x. Well, this means a half of x plus y and then times x. Okay, we can still write all of that over 2. That's easier to understand. So we'd have x plus y in a bracket, then the other x all over 2. Now we want to put in our numbers. So that's going to be 5 plus 9. Now, I don't just want to write the 5. I'm going to put it in a bracket because then I know it means times. Okay, all over 2. And 5 plus 9 is 14. 14 times the 5 all over 2. Uh, here's a little trick. 14 times 10 is 140. 5 is half of 10. So 14 times 5 is going to be half of 140, which is 70, divided by 2. And that is going to give us 35. Okay. All right. So that's our starter finish. So please remember, key point from this question is that this was all multiplied. Okay, multiplying by a half is the same as dividing by 2, and that's why we can turn it into a fraction, which is a lot easier. When we get to everything being numbers, we do want to make sure that we use brackets so that we remember that what we're actually doing is multiplying. Okay, all right, so well done on that. So we're going to move on now, and we're going to look at this question. I'm going to make a full screen. You have the background knowledge for this because we did areas of rectangles and triangles. So what I'd like you to do is pause and try the question, and then we'll go through it. Okay, well done on that, guys. Welcome back. Let's take a look at how we do this question. Okay, so in this question, we have the shape of a parallelogram. Let's get this drawn so we can look at it. Remember last time I said always make sure that you draw diagrams to help you. Okay, so that's why we're doing that now. And what they've done is they split that into a rectangle and two identical triangles. Okay. All right, how do I know that they're identical? Well, they told us that this is four centimeters, okay? And they told us that this is three centimeters. This is also three centimeters. And so since they have right angles, yes, and two sides, side, angle, side, okay? Side, angle, side, that's also four. We know that they are congruent or the same, okay? Um, and finally, they told me that this is five centimeters going from here to here. Okay, so for part A, they wanted us to find the area of the rectangle. Well, we know the area of a rectangle is like times width. So for a rectangle, that's four times five, which is equal to 20 centimeters squared in this case. Then they said, work out the area of one triangle. So let's do that for part B. Area is going to be base times height divided by 2. In this case, our base is 3 and our height is 4. So we can do 3 times 4 divided by 2, which is going to give us 12 divided by 2, or 6 centimeters squared. And then the last step is to find the area of the parallelogram. Well, that is made of two triangles and the rectangle. So the total area is going to be 20 plus 2 
times six. Now remember we can use a bracket to means time to mean times. Um, you could use a time sign. I find that gets confusing, especially if we move into algebra, okay, and we're looking at x's. So when I have lots of numbers, I like to use brackets. Here we just have two numbers, I use a time sign, but here it's nice to use brackets. Okay, so that is 20 plus 12, which is 32 centimeters squared. Okay, and that's question four done. Hopefully you guys were fine and you fully understand now. Well done. Okay. So that brings me to um, a parallelogram and how we actually come up with the formula for its area. Now, we know that it's made up of, in this case, a rectangle and two triangles, and that was interesting. Um, but let's look at how we can cut it up so that we can actually get the formula, which is just base times perpendicular height, okay? And then once we've looked at an animation for that, then I'd like you to pause and I'd actually like you to take a note on that. But at the moment, we need to look at the animation so that you can see that and how it works. So just a moment. Okay, let's see if I can make that full screen for you. There we go. Let's just remove that down here. Okay. And we should be able to play that for you. Love technical difficulties. Let's just get rid of that. There you go. Okay. All right, so if we took a rectangle and we cut that triangle, we could move that over. And what you'll see is if we're using b as the base of that rectangle and h as the height of that rectangle then actually i've got the same shape as a rectangle okay but when i move that triangle let's play that one more time okay let's move that triangle what you'll notice is that height although it's the same now has to be called the perpendicular height okay because it's perpendicular to the base so it's at a right angle to the base and that is why we have to say perpendicular height not just height this technically you see this diagonal portion that could be called a slant height because it's slanted and we can't confuse that with perpendicular height so now I need you to pause, and I would like you to take a note with a diagram of the area of the parallelogram being equal to base times perpendicular height. That is a really important key point and formula for you. So please press pause now. Okay, so now that you've done that, well done. Let's go back to looking at that okay so we've just gone through the formula you've written that down and now we need to use it okay so once again the area of a parallelogram is base length okay so we use a b for that and times the perpendicular height which in this case is represented with an h okay so now it's your turn okay you're going to apply that knowledge and i'd like you to try this question there are three parts to it so if you could pause your video now Okay, and then also once you're done, have a think about part D, which is a reasoning question. Okay, guys, well done. Let's take a look at what we should have done. Okay, right. So for question 6A, we had, you know, careful, they've labeled the slant height as well, but remember we want the perpendicular height. So our area should be base times the perpendicular height, which is eight times four, which is 32, and don't forget to square your unit centimeters squared. For part B, okay, so let's find that perpendicular height is the 25. Okay, don't use the 32 because that's not perpendicular. So area is base times perpendicular height. The base is 75 and we are multiplying by 25. Okay, so without a calculator, that's going to take a little bit more effort. So let's do that over here. 75 times 25. Okay, 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 7 is 35, plus the 2 is 37. Don't forget your placeholder of a 0. 
2 times 5 is 10, and 2 times 7 is 14, plus the 1 is 15. We can now add those together. 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 0 is 7, 3 plus 5 is 8, and 1 plus nothing is 1. Okay, so that is equal to 1, 8, 7, 5 millimeters squared. Lovely. Okay, if you're ever worried, you can always double check on a calculator. Okay, but you should always try without one first. And indeed, that's 1, 8, 7, 5. Okay, right. And for part C, we had a base of 3. Okay, and the perpendicular height was 2.5. Now, we know that 3 times 25 is 75, so we just need one decimal place. So that's 7.5, and that is centimeters squared. So really the only way you can get these wrong is to make a mistake and accidentally use your slant height instead of your perpendicular height. And that's why I keep emphasizing perpendicular height. Okay, so for part D, where it says in parts A, B, and C, which lengths didn't you use? What we need to say is we did not use the slant heights as these would not give the correct area. Okay, we did not use the slant heights as these would not give the correct area. Okay, really well done on that, guys. All right, so now we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, let me make that bigger for you. Okay, all right. So pause the video and have a think and have a go, and then we'll talk about it together. Okay. That's good. Well done on that question. Let's take a look to see how you did. Okay, not a problem if you got confused on this one. This is a challenge question. Okay, it's actually taken from a GCSE paper. I want to see how you guys would do. Um, so let's take a look. First of all, we have a lot of parallelograms to cope with. Okay, and you really should have probably drawn a model to help yourselves. Okay, it works well on line paper, probably even better on square paper. But as long as you make the heights the same and you alternate them, um, then you should be fine drawing this. I've decided on four lines for my heights. Okay, and then at that stage, you could connect everything up. And that's going to make them actually look like parallelograms because I've made sure that those heights are the same on my paper as I've drawn this diagram. And that's actually a skill, and it's an important one in maths, because sometimes you don't get a diagram, and I do think it's important you start to find ways to make sure that they're accurate. So you could actually be creating this while you're waiting for me to finish, okay? And then pause the video if you don't finish at the same time as me. Okay, I should have had another line there. There we go. Okay. And now I've got the same diagram they gave me. Right. Um, now, they've told me that going along here, that I have 25 centimeters, okay? They've also told me that this height is 10. And the problem solving comes in because I want to know, okay? the area of the whole thing. Well, how can I work that out? Have a think. We have a height. That's useful. But I'm supposed to use a perpendicular height. And here's where the visual is really powerful. Okay, I'm gonna use a different color. I can cut this here. I mean, it looks three-dimensional. It's actually two-dimensional, and I think that's where people struggle with this question. And now I've got perpendicular heights. Look, those are all right angles. 
and all of these are identical okay so one two three four five heights making up that 25 would mean that each of them is five centimeters because 25 divided by five is five okay and so that's where the trick comes in so let's find the area of one so the area of one parallelogram is going to be equal to base times the perpendicular height, which we now know is 5. So that's 10 times 5, which is 50 centimeters squared. But we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So now for the total area, we will need to multiply by 5. So 5 times 50 is equal to 250 centimeters squared final answer. Okay, so I think that's quite clever. Um, we need to see that actually this is a two-dimensional um, shape. Okay, it's just one parallelogram after the other, but it looks three-dimensional unlike an accordion, and that is actually where we make the mistake. Okay, um, we think about it as three-dimensional and we really struggle to see how to solve that question as a result. All right, you've got one more question for me. Okay, so let's make this three-dimensional. Sorry, not three-dimensional. Let's blow this up for you. There we go. Okay, please press pause, and then we'll go through the answer once you're done trying. Okay, guys, well done. Okay, there we go. Let's get this running up for you. Good, okay, so this time we just have the one parallelogram. Okay, so let's get our drawing done. Okay, and again, these things don't have to be to scale. They never have to be perfect, they just have to be tidy. Okay, that way you can work with them. All right, they've given us a perpendicular height which they told us is four centimeters, okay? And they've also given us this length here, which they've said is x plus three centimeters. Now in the question, they say, shown below is a parallelogram with a length of x plus three, which we've got now in a diagram, and a perpendicular height of four centimeters. The area of the parallelogram is 30 centimeters squared, so they've already given us the area, of 30 centimeters squared, and we need to find the size of x. This is okay because we know our formula is base times perpendicular height. I know that the a is 30. I also know that my base is x plus 3, and I know that my height is 4. Okay, it's not beautifully written at the moment. I'm going to rearrange this so this looks like expanding brackets because that's what it is. And we can say that 30 is equal to 4 times the x plus 3. So now let's expand those brackets. We get 30 is equal to 4 times x, which is 4x, plus 4 times 3, which is 12. Okay, and now we solve. Remember your order of operations. First, we want to take away the 12 so that the 4x is isolated. So minus 12, both sides. That will give us 18 is equal to 4x. Okay. Now I can divide both sides by 4. That cancels out, leaving us with x is equal to 18 over 4. Okay, now we have 18 over 4. I want to make sure to simplify that first. They both divide by 2, which will give me 9 over 2. And now I can write it as a mixed number. Okay, so x is equal to, now it's up to you, mixed number, or I'm happy with a decimal. So if it's a mixed number, 2 goes into 9 four times with a remainder of a half. So that's one option. For your answer or you could have written it as 
centimeters. Either one is fine. Either one would get you the marks, okay? That's it for today's lesson. Really proud of you. You can replay it, go through any of it you need to, but excellent work today and well done.